I started as an engineer, but that was a long time ago. And uh, since then, I've been working in industry up until about 10 years ago when I became dedicated to the development of open standards. Uh, within the PICMG organization, we have 10 families of standards. However, we've had great success within the comms industry. And comms, for those who don't know, are computer on module form factors. They are standard modules that define the I.O. pinouts, the processor capabilities, but they usually are then married to a carrier card. The carrier card is usually application specific. So for many, um, not just customers, but for many industry applications, there's a custom carrier card, but then you're able to be faster to market because you have multiple vendors to buy different modules from our comms. And so we've spent the last four years working on uh, the COM HPC specification. That specification is the effort of over 26 um, companies from over 12 different countries. They've spent thousands of hours, um, led by Christian Etter of Congo Tech. And what they decided to do was face the challenge of, okay, PCI, Gen 4 when they started, now Gen 5 is required. We need a lot of PCIe lanes to handle all the new faster I.O. I also realized that the processors um, have more capabilities, but they require a larger size. They have heat dissipation issues. And so this team got together to try to address all of those technology trends and say, okay, we see all the value in that. Now, how do we bring it to the edge of the network or bring it into harsh environments at the edge? And at the same time, because they realized they needed to do a lot of processing at the edge, you can't be dependent upon the cloud, particularly in real-time applications like autonomous vehicles. You really don't want to wait on the cloud before a decision's made, um, just as one of many examples. So this team got together, and just over a year ago, the, spec, the base spec was ratified. They've also developed a design guide for the carrier cards um, and brought I mean, just another feature that they brought to comms that never existed before is system management. So they're not just out there on their own. You can remotely diagnose them. You can do various things. So it is very exciting to be at Embedded World because the last one in March 2020 was we were so close to the spec being ready. You know, And so companies were starting to think about their product roadmaps or talking they're talking to customers and now in you know June of 2022 you walk around the halls and I'm seeing product seeing applications and um, in just this short period of time the adoption started and the team is actually reforming because com HPC today has five different sizes uh, and they realize well maybe we want us a mini version so they're regrouping to have a mini version. And that mini is, will kind of act as a, not a bridge, but fill one of the final gaps between Com Express modules and Com HPC. So Com Express has been around for quite some time. It is the leading uh, Com in the industry. It will be around for at least another decade or two because all of the capabilities in Com HPC are not required for various oper um, applications. So we, uh, it's, it's a very exciting time. This is a, the industry adoption is fabulous and the teams working and committed to open standards are just achieving feats that individual companies simply can't because uh, not having the, both the debate, the discussion and the various um, technical expertise to all come together and agree upon a mutually beneficial specification. When you are working on open specifications, it's a long process. So you're, the specification work is actually um, introducing things and bringing things in where the processors may not be available yet, where we know the roadmaps of different I.O. So we embed that within the spec, but it can't fully be realized until those products and components are available. So right now, the fact that there's design work going on, that we're seeing carrier cards being designed, that customers are interested is exciting because that means adoption is going to be real. 
over the next couple of years when we'll see full-fledged applications. Uh, we know what many of them are working towards, but that will be, that's uh, the satisfaction for the team and for to see the industry adopt a new standard. We're, at, we're still at the beginning of that, so I'm really looking forward to coming here in another year and so be like, look at this demo. <clears throat> this is what we're really doing to automate a, a supermarket. This is in this specific autonomous vehicle. This is happening. You know, and so we're still, you know, now we can kind of taste it, but I, soon we'll see it, which is one of the things I'm looking forward to. And in the meantime, the teams keep forging forward. You know, they're making a smaller version. There'll be different flavors. It's also a platform. So um, certain columns and things are sort of uh, processor specific. They might be x86 centric. This specification was developed from the beginning to be processor, processor agnostic. So as you can imagine, all of the different roadmaps of the processors are going to bring things in and um, the possibilities are phenomenal and it's basically a form factor that is going to help enable um, the digitization effort and so many of the things that we're seeing, bring machine language to the edge, all of that stuff. It needs a physical platform and ComHPC brings that. There's all the advancement of technology. There's so many possible things and there's things that are considered much more interesting at the application level, various stuff. They, everything needs to exist in a platform. And so if you have this concept for a software and you can build applications, but they can't run at the speeds, they can't deal with the heat, vibration, various things, or have the amount of computing power where you need it, those things will never be realized. So I kind of feel that it's sort of at the core and the foundation, the embedded hardware. And so, and then the open specifications is just what makes it e more easily adoptable, have a bigger ecosystem of companies building towards it. So I think that's what um, excites me because we need that excitement to have the top stuff ever be realized.